Do I have your attention? 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 Is you taking notes? Okay, you guys, so what we have here is one pound of elbow macaroni noodles that have been cooked to al dente in kosher salted water, and then I completely drain them off. Make sure you get off as much water as possible, transfer them to the baking dish, and then add one stick of Kerrygold butter so that that can start to coat the noodles. And then just sit those to the side, and then we'll get back to those momentarily. But let's start to talk about, of course, the cheeses. So what we have here is eight ounces of Monterey Jack. You're going to use eight ounces of sharp cheddar, eight ounces of white cheddar, eight an eight ounce pack of cream cheese, and then you're going to use 16 ounces of Velveeta and eight ounces of mozzarella cheese. So go ahead and put those to the side. We'll get to those momentarily. Let's focus on that roux. Now, as always, you guys know, if you're gonna make a cheese sauce, you're gonna need a roux. So what we've added is one stick of Kerrygold butter and a half a cup of our all-purpose flour. Now, I will be using Kerrygold butter throughout this entire recipe because to me, Kerrygold is a full fat, high quality butter. As you can see, it's already bright yellow. I'm telling you, this butter makes a huge, huge difference. There's certain kind of recipes where I feel like you just can't skimp. And to me, that's the reason why I don't make back, baked macaroni and cheese that often because it does cost me a pretty penny because I am kind of particular about what I use in the recipe itself. But while our roux is getting nicely mixed up, cooking off that raw flour taste, I want to talk about the importance of making sure that you do not overcook your noodles to begin with. Once your noodles are almost fork tender, fork tender, take them out, put them in the strainer, let them drain off. Do not, I repeat, do not rinse the noodles ever, you guys. The whole purpose is the starch helps everything else adhere to the noodles. So don't be rinsing off your noodles. That that just is, that's, that's defeating the whole purpose. You know what I mean? So, uh, and make sure that it's nicely salted. I used a good, uh, maybe about two to three pinches of kosher salt. You want your pasta to be nicely seasoned. That also will be a, that'll come in handy in the end. So now that our roux is looking good and we know that that flour taste has been kind of, you know, cooked off a bit, we're going to go ahead and start adding in our liquids. So what we're going to add in right now is one and a half cups of whole milk. Now, by the time this recipe is done, you're going to have used two full cups, but I'll let you know when it's time to add in that last half a cup a little bit later on. Make sure you're continuously mixing so that you don't end up having any lumps or clumps in your roux. It's really important to make sure that you're mixing throughout all of this process. Then what we're going to go ahead and do is add in one cup of our half and half. Now, if you're in a bind and a pinch and you know you can't afford to buy half and half, that's completely understandable. You can just use whole milk. That's perfectly fine. But I would definitely say make sure that you're using whole milk because you want something that's going to be a little bit more on the fattier side because all of that is truly going to help bring everything together. So now that our roux is looking nice, it's, you know, it's starting to thicken up, we can go on ahead and start adding in our cheeses. So like I said, that is eight ounces of our cream cheese. And then we're going to add, I'm sorry, that was the mozzarella. Then we're going to add in eight ounces of the Monterey Jack, eight ounces of the white sharp cheddar, eight ounces of the sharp cheddar. And then we're going to add in, of course, that block of cream cheese, which is also eight ounces. Um, so... Now, you know, you guys, if you happen to have a really good non-stick pan, I would highly, highly suggest use the best pan that you guys have available. Because, you know, cheese burns really, really quickly. And because there's not nearly as much liquid in this as there is cheese, if you're using a pan that is not that great and, and it isn't non-stick, you might end up with a lot of burnt up cheese and you don't want that. You can also prevent that from happening by making sure you're keeping an eye on the temperature. Everyone's stove works differently. So, you know, mine is on about a six or seven. So we're going to add in a half a cup of sour cream. You don't need any more. You don't need any less. 
just a half cup. Don't get crazy with the side cream now. That's just to give a slight bit of tang. Um, and like I said, go ahead and continue to mix that up. As you guys can see, you're probably going to think, oh my God, this is never going to melt down. Why is it so thick? Am I doing it wrong? No, you guys are doing it just right. It is meant to be a thick sauce. I like southern style baked macaroni and cheese where it's so thick you can cut it out like a piece of cake. You hear me? I'm not too keen on like the runnier versions of baked macaroni and cheese. They're, they can definitely have the flavor and taste good, but I always love that thick baked macaroni and cheese. You know what I mean? So once that starts to slightly melt down, like I said, make sure you guys are keeping an eye on your temperature. If you need to adjust the temperature, make sure you are doing so. So now that that is melting down, what we're going to do is we're going to start to add in our seasonings, of course. So we're going to add in one teaspoon of black pepper. We're going to add in a half a tablespoon of seasonal salt. We're going to add in one teaspoon of paprika. And then we're also going to add in one teaspoon of Creole seasoning and my secret ingredient. Now, I wasn't going to tell you all about this, but I got to do it. My secret ingredient is two and a half tablespoons of sweetened condensed milk. Now, y'all don't go crazy and just start free balling that. Get yourself a measuring utensil because if you mess around and put too much of that sweetened condensed milk in it, you're going to end up with candied sweet macaroni and cheese. And that is not the business. It does not make it sweet at all. What it does is it just gives it... It just gives it something and you, you'll be eating it and you'll be like, what is that? It's that sweetened condensed milk. I'm trying to tell you. It is glorious. It's, it's my favorite part of the baked macaroni and cheese, honest to goodness. But now you guys can see how the cheese sauce is really starting to come together and it's really nice and thick and it's pulling away from the sides nicely, which is fantastic. So now is the point, you guys, when you want to go on ahead and add in that other half a cup of your whole milk. That'll just help slightly thin it out just a bit. Now, if for some reason, you know, you added too much cheese or didn't follow the recipe exact and yours just seems like it's turning into, you know, one giant brick. Add in a few splashes more of milk, but don't get too crazy. You don't want it to be loose. It's meant to be that thick, okay? Have your oven preheated at 350 degrees because you guys were in the home stretch. We're almost there. Before we add our cheese sauce, what you want to do is get three large eggs, and you're going to put that directly onto the noodles. Now, this is a key step. You want to make sure that you're putting your eggs directly on your noodles so that that egg mixture can go inside of the noodles and are coating the outside of the noodles as well. That will help make sure that your baked macaroni and cheese is going to set nicely and that it's going to come together so that you don't end up with the more looser version of baked macaroni and cheese. So that's a step that you don't want to skip. So now that we've done that, we're going to add in our cheese sauce. I'm, I'm doing little by little. Um, this pan is a, it is a big size pan, but I just don't want to make a mess. So I add mine in, you know, little by little. But as you guys can see, you know, this is a really, really thick cheese sauce. But I promise you, it's meant to be that way. When it comes out of the oven, you will see in a few moments um, what the texture of it truly turns out to be like and why it's important for it to be this thick at this point in stage in the recipe. You know, if you pour it in and it pours out really easily and kind of watery, uh, you know, you, you're going to end up with a very runny baked macaroni and cheese. It's probably still going to taste fantastic, but it won't be that thick baked macaroni and cheese that is always such a staple, you know, in our grandmothers and our great grandparents homes. Um, and that's just the way that I prefer mine. Um, so, you know, make sure that you are really mixing it around. And that's also the reason why I said, you know, to make sure that you're putting the egg mixture directly on the noodles so that that way you can make sure that those noodles are completely coated in the eggs to where if you had put the eggs in the sauce, there's no, you know what I mean? That it wouldn't, it wouldn't work the same way. All that would have done would thicken up the sauce more. You know what I mean? 
So now we've added in our last bit of sauce. And as you guys might have seen, there was a bit left. For this particular recipe for mine, I had maybe a little less than a half a cup left over. And that's completely fine. Because, you know, baked macaroni and cheese, y'all, is not cheap to make. So you definitely don't want to be making more sauce than what you need to. So that's that's definitely something you want to keep an eye on. Make sure that you're using the proper measurements. You know, try not to use. Don't get overzealous with the cheese. Try to stick to the recipe. And I promise you, you know, if you use a one pound box, a one pound box of macaroni, you'll be just fine. It'll be all you need. So now that you've gotten everything in, you guys, we're almost there. All you got to do now is just smooth everything out. Make sure you get yourself a wet towel or, you know, something and clean up the edges of your baking dish. Presentation is key, you guys. And you don't want that cheese to be burning to the side of your pan. So now we're going to take another eight ounce bag of our sharp cheddar. So that's two bags of sharp cheddar that you use. One went in the sauce, and then this is going to be the one you're going to use to top it off. Now, I promise you, you don't need any more cheese in this. Only put that one bag because there is such a thing as using way too much cheese. You don't, you don't want to do too much, okay? So just use that, put it on the top. That'll make sure it has that beautiful yellow color at the end. And then before we pop it in the oven, get yourself a half a stick of your Kerrygold butter. I do it in little tiny cubes. Put it on the top. Pop it in the oven, you guys, at 350 degrees for about 35 to 40 minutes. And when you take it out of the oven, my, I mean, <laughs> I don't even I don't know what I don't even know what to say. Just look at it. You know, you. Oh, my God. You know, this just don't make no damn sense. Just look at the edges. Look how it's crispy. My God on today. And wait till look at how look at how it go in there. Oh my God. It's just so thick. Just like I like it. Now the key is, you guys, when you take this out of the oven, make sure you let it sit for about 10 to 15 minutes so that it can set and come out nice and thick and firm. You know, if you cut into it too soon, it'll just be a runny mess. So give it some time to set up and then check it out. Oh, I mean, honestly, I don't even know what to tell you. If you don't try this recipe out, you are a fool. I am trying to tell you, if you make this, just be prepared to have your family and friends ask you to make it every single holiday and every event. I love you guys so much. Thank y'all for tuning in. And as always, y'all baby, stay cute and take care. Bye. Simply Food by T.Y.